For those who are new to the channel, I, uh, I'm Rick. I talk about Power Query. And in today's episode, we're going to look at formatting dates, a very, very common activity. So stay tuned. So formatting dates is very important if you want to know a little bit more on in what month you're working, what day of the week it is. And there are situations where you simply want to get some information from a date, put it into a text string and return it as a value. Now, a lot of people know the basics of this. So for instance, on our screen, we have a list of dates. And if you're curious about the month name, we could do a function like date month name. We could reference the dates column. And I could call this month name. Now, after you press OK, we're going to get a nicely formatted column, which which has like the full month name here. So that's great. And, and in a similar fashion, you can also, so the, in this case, we were looking at some text, but you can also extract things like the year. So that's a component of the date. So I could have that like this. And we say date, uh, we call this year. OK. And that's all good. And people usually know this. But let's say you want to combine these to a single value. Now here's the pitfall that people usually fall into. If I'm going to combine these two columns, this is what, what will happen. Let's say we want to show January 2023. I could say I want to have the month name and I'm going to combine it with the space. And now I want to combine it with the year. Say, okay, well, we get an error. We get an error because we're trying to combine a text value with a number value. That's what the error implies down here as well. Now, what most people do is because they know these functions by themselves, they then wrap this in a text from function. And don't get me wrong, this is perfectly valid and it's going to work. But now let's imagine you want to create a string that is a bit more complex. So you want to have the first, uh, uh, let's say the first three letters of the day. Then you want to have a comma, then you want to say like December 12, 2024. So that's a bit of a, a string that's composed of different elements. Now here's what that could look like. I saved it just so we can copy paste it. So let me delete this and paste this right in. So in this custom formula, I have quite a bit of information. So I first extract the day of the week name, the first three characters, which is sun for the first line. Then we have to add a comma and a space. And then for the next part, which is January, I get the month name and I add another space after. Then to get the day number, I first have to get the day as a number value. But to be able to concatenate it, you need to transform it to text. So that's where text from comes in. And we do the same for year. Now, again, this works, but that's not how you should format your dates. Check this out. We can do this in a better way. So when you're going to format your dates, we could do something else. So what we could do is we have the date to text function and the date to text function can take the dates column. And if I don't do anything with it, I'm going to get a text value here. But what it also has is some fun formatting strings. So if we look at the date to text function, there is a second argument and it says options here, but I can provide, for example, a lowercase d plus and let's see so it's now still the same it seems i think we need to specify an option and say format equals this and we can add an extra d so the first d is a format that is the date the second d shows us a day number with two digits now how do you know how to go with this well there's a useful website. There is uh, something called Power Query How. Let me put this down below. If you go to the Power Query How website, you can look for the date to text function. And once you get there, you can scroll down. First of all, there is an explanation of the arguments. And Power Query How has all of the, all of the functions available in the M language. But also, if you scroll down, there are some useful examples. For example, here is one example that we use to get uh, the 31st of December's output. But to make it easier for you, I created a table. And within that table, you can see all of the values that are supported. So for instance, you need to have a percentage and D to show a single digit. 
Now earlier what I tried to do was provide a single D and that didn't work for me to return a single value. But if I add a percentage just in front of it, it's giving us the day value. Now, once you know this, you can use all of these components to create this logic in a very efficient way. So let's, for example, say we want to have the Sunday. That is three times the D. And if we want to have December later, December is four capital M's. So we could start out with three times D. That works. Then we can have a comma and a space. That also works. And then we just learned that we can have four capital M's. And now we have Sunday, January here. This is great. This is great. Now for the next part, we could go and say we want to have a day. And because we have the day, day value together with other items in here, we don't need to add the percentage for it. And let's say we want to have the year. We just go back to Power Query How. And you can see that the four digit year requires you to provide four times the Y. So we can add this Y, 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 Y. Select OK. And let me just put this on a new line here. But as you can see, the code is so much easier, first of all, for you to write, second of all, to understand. And if I had to guess, I think the performance is going to be much better as well. So whenever you're going to need to format your values, I recommend going to Power Query How, and then you can choose either of these. Now, what's fun is if you want to have a full long date, for example, you can also provide a single capital D. And it's actually going to provide you that long date just like that. So there's a few options here. Now, once you know this, this is very, very useful. But know that I have my computer on the English language here. So you might be working, uh, let's for example, say you're Dutch or you're German. You might want to see different values here. Now, what's good is we can also provide a culture code. So once we scroll down here, I see I have a culture code of the Netherlands, NL, NL. And when we use this, in addition to our formatting string, I could say comma culture equals NL, NL. And if I then press OK, you're going to find that these values are now in the Dutch language. Now, this has some benefits to it. First of all, if your computer was in the Dutch language, by default, it would have shown you the Dutch values. But you never know who's going to open your reports. And if you want to make sure that everybody sees the same values, you can provide the format string. That's great. In that way, it's very predictable what values people are going to see. At the same time, you can mix and match different values. So if you want the first half of the string to have the German culture and the second half the Dutch, you could use the date to text function twice. And for the first half, you use the Dutch formatting string. And for the second one, you use a German one. Now, that's all I wanted to say for formatting text values. I hope you're going to pick up this tip. If you want to learn more about the M language and other nifty tricks that make your life easier, we have just released a new book. It's called The Definitive Guide to Power Query M. It's currently available on Amazon. Uh, you can find it on O'Reilly. You can have a subscription for Pact, any of the big retailers. And if you really want to get serious about learning M, we think you're going to love it. So uh, have a look at that if you like. Other than that, more videos are coming up. So uh, if you want to, don't want to miss it, subscribe to the channel. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.